Cellular modems are the heart of every cellular connected device. We're going to give you a rundown of the current state of the art of 5G and 4G cellular modems and let you know what's coming down the pike so you can better plan your future upgrades. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, and this is a fall of 2022 update on the state of the art of 5G and 4G cellular modems. Now, cellular modems are the tiny little chip inside of every cellular device that actually manages the connection between the device and the cellular network. And you know, the modem is kind of kind of the engine that keeps you connected, and the engines keep getting better every year as new technology comes out, as the chips evolve, they get more. Uh, faster, more power efficient, have more capabilities, and often over time they get cheaper too. So, you know, technology evolves, things get better, faster, and cheaper. So, if you've got a cellular device that is more than just a few years old, you're probably way behind when it comes to the cellular modem technology. And, well, there, you know what's coming next and what's down the pipeline in the year ahead. Maybe it's going to have to time your upgrades and think about when you next want to do this, you know, do a, a system upgrade. Now, both 5G and 4G modems do continue to evolve, even though most of the excitement is on 5G. So we're going to talk about the state of 5G cellular modems first. Now, in the United States, Qualcomm, chip manufacturer Qualcomm, is kind of the dominant leader when it comes to 5G chips for data-connected devices in particular. Um, so the, actually, they're now on their fourth generation of 5G chip. The first was the X50. This was the chip that powered the very earliest 5G devices. And we warned people not to get too excited about that because that chip was mostly just a proof of concept. It was very power hungry and it did not support 4G fallback. So any 5G devices based on the X50 actually had to have a separate 4G modem inside to stay connected because there was so little 5G coverage back then. X50 devices are pretty much gone from the market and are considered obsolete now. So those early adopters, well, that's the early adopter tax for jumping on that. The second generation chip from Qualcomm was the X55 series, and that is still mainstream today. It's been out for two years now, but it was a very, very um, solid uh, 5G chip. And it is in basically most cellular routers out there, 5G cellular routers, it's in a lot of uh, 5G devices that... Um, you know, particularly the devices that came out in 2020. It was in the flagship phones from 2020. And things have moved on from there. Um, the one thing that the X55 lacked um, was the ability to combine multiple types of 5G together to get a better, stronger signal, faster signal, over, particularly in fringe areas. So Qualcomm addressed that in their next chip, the X60, which was in uh, devices like the iPhone 13 and flagship devices from 2021. That one allowed different kinds of 5G bands to be combined together. It was a pretty substantial improvement, but for whatever reason, the X60 generation of chips never made it into mobile hotspots, never made it into routers. It was basically a smartphone exclusive, probably because of all the supply chain constraints of the year 2021. Moving into 2022, the chip of the year from Qualcomm, this is now the kind of the current flagship 5G chip out there, is the X65 and its little brother, the X62. So this is the first chip that supports what's called the 5G Phase 2 standard. So this is the, um, the next in the series evolution of 5G standards to support more underlying technologies between the tower and your devices. So it's actually a pretty substantial jump from the X50, F55, and X60. And we're now just starting to see it come to data devices. Like we've got the new uh, series from Insego. It's the M3100. We've got the uh, at and It's a Nighthawk M6 series. And uh, they're starting to have more generic versions of these. So we're starting to finally see mobile hotspots embrace this X65 series chip. Um, which is pretty exciting. All, all the flagship phones that came out in 2022, for the most part, are based on the X65, um, including the Samsung Galaxy S22 was the first, and now we've got the iPhone uh, 14 has it as well. But we're still not seeing any cellular routers with the X65 series chip. And you know, we're getting actually a lot of questions of like, hey, why not? I want to invest in a high-end cellular router, but I want to make sure I have the latest cellular technology. And is this really significant? Should I wait for this? And, well, 
Maybe. We'll kind of explain the trade-offs you have there. But what we are now seeing as we get towards the end of 2022 is that the cellular modules that will go inside routers are finally showing up and testing at the FCC. So a cellular module, the, these modem modules, take that modem chip, they kind of package it with all the auxiliary uh, radio electronics that they need, build it into a little module that is standardized. So when router manufacturers or other device, embedded device manufacturers are designing their products, they don't have to design them around a single modem chip. They just have a little module slot inside and they can have a single product line that supports different modem modules for different markets around the world or different feature sets. And so it takes a lot longer product wise, product cycle wise for these modem modules to percolate through. It's not like a hotspot or a phone where the chip is built right into it. The module makers have to build the chips, bring them to build the modules, bring them to market, get them FCC certified. And then the router manufacturers can start in buying those modules and embracing them into their product lines. So we've been tracking this. We've been waiting because we've got a lot of people who are kind of eager for X65 series modules to make it into routers. And we've been tracking and there are now several companies. We actually have four that we've seen show up at the FCC that have um, submitted um, X65 series modules that will be coming to market soon. So we've got Telet, Sierra Wireless, Quectel, and Fibocom. And there's probably others that haven't disclosed press releases or FCC um, applications yet. So we know those modules are in the pipeline. We don't know when they'll actually show up in routers yet, but they're coming. Probably we'll see them, you know, start to be manufactured towards the end of 2022, which means products sometime in 2023. So don't get too excited just yet, but hey, they are coming. So we'll see a new generation of cellular routers showing up. Does it make sense to wait for the X65 or is the X55 series still good enough if you're looking for a 5G cellular router? And the main trade-off to keep in mind is the, um, the performance you will see in fringe areas. So the um, X65 compared to the 55 and the 60 before it has a smarter tuning, smarter, uh, they call it AI enhanced uh, radio features that it can do a better job at pulling signal out from really, really weak signals and pulling data out of really, weak, really weak signals. You can do a better job of combining multiple 5G bands together to do 5G carrier aggregation, particularly different types of 5G bands. And then one thing that is really, really important for AT&T customers is only the X65 generation or, or its little brother, the X62, has the capability to tune into AT&T's mid-band Andromeda spectrum. This is um, a big chunk of spectrum that is going to be kind of the heart of AT&T's high performance 5G going forward at late 2022 and into 2023. And it is not backwards compatible with anything before the X65. That's why AT&T was you know, in such a rush to move their hotspot lines to have the X65 and X62. And um, that's, you know, because they're, so much of their network is going to be relying on this. So if AT&T is your network of choice, that is actually a very, very important key reason to hold out for X65 series chips. Verizon, T-Mobile, others, maybe you gotta weigh the trade-offs and we'll talk about those more in the conclusions. But so LTE modems are still evolving as well. And in particular, there's a two new um, you know, LTE modems that have been coming to market or new sets of modules that have kind of gotten us excited that have opened up new uh, capabilities in the market. The most first one is the new category seven modem modules and modems that we're seeing showing up on some mainstream value price cellular devices. Now, category seven is a slight improvement over the category six modules that have been very mainstream for a while. Um, but the main downside of all the category six modules that have been on the market is that they don't support certain key cellular bands, um, particularly T-Mobile band 71. Um, which is very, very important for T-Mobile customers, and AT&T's Band 14, which is FirstNet, which is pretty significant for AT&T customers as well. So these lower-end uh, Category 6 uh, devices perform pretty well, but particularly for T-Mobile and also for AT&T, they kind of left you missing out on some key parts of the network. Um, that wasn't a, a downside of the being Category 6. It's mostly just a downside of these were older, older designs. But now we're seeing new Category 7 modems that... Um, take you know the category six designs which are actually much newer chips they're they're more power efficient probably more uh, internally efficient as well 
they add these missing bands because they're newer and they also have an important improvement over category six is that like category six they support carry aggregation for download but the category seven modems also support cat uh, carrier aggregation for uploads so your upload performance can potentially double so that's actually a pretty significant improvement for what is now a very mainstream low cost value priced modems and so we're just now starting to see some category seven um uh, modules percolate into the router market and we're looking forward to them kind of replacing category six and pushing category six out the door um, because you know more bands better upload performance and still value pricing is a great thing and um, so we kind of consider category seven our new minimum for 4g lte devices if you're going to get 4g at least get category seven category four devices are still on market don't pay any attention to them. They're awful performers. Category 6 now has been eclipsed. Focus on Category 7. Now, other new modems that we're starting to see just percolate into new modem modules and we expect to see in routers soon is new versions of Category 12 modems that support more bands. So just like the um, you know, Category 6 to Category 7 jump, the Category 12 modems aren't changing categories. They're still going to have the same category 12 performance of 3x carrier aggregation for download and 2x carrier aggregation for upload. So solid performance. But the older category 12 modems that were on the market didn't support those some of those key bands and were a little bit limited. So if you were on T-Mobile or AT&T perhaps or you know had other networks, and particularly T-Mobile was the one that was missing, these cat older category 12 modules did not work with you. There are newer Category 12 modules that do support Band 71 for T-Mobile and make Category 12 pretty worthwhile again. So we're going to be seeing in the very near future some routers that have newer Category 12 modules and keep your eye out for them because they're going to be kind of a substantial improvement over the older ones, particularly if you've got T-Mobile. Now we get the questions like, what should you buy if you're out shopping for your cellular device now? And what should you potentially hold out for and wait for to maybe get the next generation of, of hardware? Now, if you're looking for baseline 4G, as we said, um, it makes sense to focus on finding Category 7 devices. Try to avoid Category 6, Category 4, and any of those um, older designs. You know, baseline Category 7 modems are not much more expensive than the Category 6, so we expect to see it in value price products. So keep your eye on that if you're looking for just base level 4G connectivity. Now, if you're looking for a dual modem, you know, a, a dual modem cellular router that can connect to two networks at once, and you're still wanting 4G, um, Category 12 is now actually a pretty interesting way to go. Looking for the newer iterations of Category 12. You know, Peplink kind of bridged the gap already. They've got a, a, a version of the Max Transit Pro that has Category 7 and Category 12, the older Category 12. But, well, if they had newer Category 12s, they'd have no reason to have that kind of hybrid two different modems in, in one router version. So we're expecting to see the newer Category 12s, now that we're seeing them being FCC approved, percolate out into the market. And that, for people who are looking for a dual modem 4G device, um, is probably going to be the most interesting way to go. And why would you consider a dual modem 4G device versus jumping into 5G? The, one of the main advantages of a Category 12 modem is it uses 2x2 two two MIMO, which means two antenna ports. And uh, 5G devices or higher Category 4G devices like Category 18 or Category 20 use four antenna ports, which means a lot more antenna cabling going to your roof. A lot more potential performance, but if you're trying to keep things simple or you already have an existing um, you know, five-in-one antenna with four cellular on your roof or something like that, um, Going to a dual modem Cat 12 uh, 4G device is a way to just take advantage of those cables you have. But now, well, isn't it time to jump to 5G and should should people be ready to go to 5G? And indeed, 5G technology has gotten pretty, pretty good. Every 5G modem is a really good 4G modem. So even when you're not in 5G areas, it will still work great for 4G. So yeah, if you are weighing your, your trade-offs, buying new devices or you know considering upgrades, 5G is, is pretty worthwhile to consider now. Um, the networks behind the scenes are great. You know, particularly Verizon and T-Mobile have great performance in a lot of places on 5G. AT&T is going to be having a whole lot of 5G rollout in the near future. And that's actually where kind of the biggest trade-off comes into. If AT&T is your focus, it does probably make sense to wait and or get 
mobile hotspots, focus your, your purchases on mobile hotspots that have the X65 or X62 already, or wait for routers to have that. AT&T is really going to be benefiting from that next generation of hardware. Um, if you're not on AT&T, you know, don't, don't hold back. If you find a, a good 5G device that is appealing to you and fits your network installation stuff, mainstream 5G, the X55 is still good. So feel free to get routers with the X55. Um, but if you, you know, can look for the X62 or X65, it will give you more future-proof capabilities. It will give you more performance in fringe areas in particular. And we're looking to do some testing to really kind of prove, prove that out. But that's, that's what it should be on paper. And, you know, that's kind of the trade-offs is like, you know, decide to get 5G now, go mainstream or get a hotspot um, or hold off. It might be sometime in 2023, hopefully the first half of 2023, that we'll start to see these next generation of modem modules percolate into routers. So we know a lot of people are waiting for that and been holding back for, you know, actually years now because the whole router industry skipped over the uh, X60 generation. So you still have a bit longer to wait, but the technology is coming. We see it percolating through the FCC pipeline and well, there's an exciting future ahead, no matter what kind of technology you want to embrace. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.